Facebook told us the future is private, but the average user has no idea what data they're generating or who can see it, let alone how to actually secure their data. Data harvesters like Facebook and Google earn nearly a trillion dollars a year. What is their product? It's you. Data control should be a fundamental human right, with equal data rights for all. Until now, we've surrendered this right to giant corporations. I asked, data, I asked Facebook for my personal data, and I found out that over 3,000 companies are following me and paying Facebook to do this, and this is happening forever. Introducing Ozone. Take back control of your data, and take back the billions that big data is earning on you. How does it work? Simply sync your platforms like Facebook and Google to see all of your personal data organized in simple categories, fully anonymized and encrypted. Sorry. Ozone offers a reverse subscription model where companies you approve can pay to subscribe to your anonymized data. For each subscription, you receive a monthly payment directly into your Venmo, PayPal, or bank account of your choice. Our patented technology encrypts your data and only you have the private key. Ozone then runs encrypted machine learning to match only the data you want to share with offers that are targeted for you. What's in it for the businesses? Pick a zip code, age, gender, and category, and Ozone will return pre-approved audiences that match your targeted profile. Companies can engage these audiences in targeted ads and direct marketing that has a high likelihood of approval, high likelihood of conversion. This is ethically sourced data that's controlled by the user. We have a simple freemium model where consumers get simple, free tools to organize and secure their personal data, and companies get pre-approved audiences and only pay for conversions, not just eyeballs like on Facebook. We've poached users directly off of Facebook and have two live paying enterprise customers. We're also beginning a proof of concept with a tier one media company that's looking to ethically source consumer data from their 100 million monthly unique users. My co-founder, Lyndon, and I met in the Google alumni group. We come from the belly of the beast as alumni of Google and Facebook. <coughs> We've also founded and sold companies in the cybersecurity and machine learning spaces. Moving on to the demo. Here we see Lyndon is logged into his Ozone account, where we can see his real-time earnings tied to data he's synced from platforms like Facebook and Google. We can also see real-time offers and discounts based on targeted ads. For example, Lyndon can save 15% on United Airlines because he's chosen to share his travel history, including his regular flights between San Francisco and New York. Ozone uses encrypted machine learning to match offers with Linden's anonymized data. At the top, we see offers that are matched to Linden's activity on the Ozone app. On the bottom, we see offers that are matched to Linden's interests that are derived from his anonymized third-party data. We're especially excited to launch our intelligence portal, which shows Lyndon where he's spending his money, as well as which companies are paying to subscribe to his anonymized data. On the activity feed, we can see every Ozone activity organized by company and dollar amount. 
Here's where it gets really exciting. In the account slide, we can see Linden's projected lifetime earnings based on his own data, as well as every platform that's either synced or unsynced. This $112,000 represents Linden's alternative retirement savings. We're working with a tier one bank to connect this directly into 401k contributions. Back to the slides. There are a few companies in our space, but none have solved the privacy versus monetization paradox as we have. They either have weak security, give away too many rights, or are missing our patented technology that protects user data forever. We have a number of patents pending that give us a two-year head start at the intersection of machine learning, privacy, and identity. With Ozone, you can take back control of your data. Sign up today at ozone.ai. Judges. Yeah, I'll hop on, uh, in with the first question. First of all, thank you. Great presentation. Um, I'm curious, what do you view as the initial target consumer profile? Who do you think will be the early adopter? And then what do you want to test to, I guess, drive mar mass market adoption? Yeah. <clears throat> Our, we're, we're targeting the U.S. market right now. The average Internet user that's just curious, they want to see what kind of exhaust am I leaving? What data am I generating every day? What kind of advertisers are seeing my data? And how do I see it in a language that I understand? So this is basically anybody who is maybe a little bit less data savvy and would like a little bit of visibility into what they're doing every day. So more of, is it more of the discount shopper, you think, or more of the security-obsessed consumer? Uh, it's probably more the discount shopper. We're, we're targeting um, users who have maybe casual curiosity and data privacy but are not obsessive about privacy practices. Just piling on to Kara's question, um, has there been other attempts to do this in the past? And, and granted, the timing for this now may be great, given all of the, the kind of public attention to the issue. But historically, the two big challenges have been trying to convince people to care about it, because this is a trade-off most people are comfortable making. They give up some privacy in return for you know, various media you know, properties and services. And when you actually look at how much they can make, the, the amount of money they can make is questionable. You know, it ends up being a handful of dollars, you know, per year type of thing. And so how do you guys think about those dynamics and convincing enough people this really is, is worth it and, the, and that economically it's in their best interest? Yeah, we're treating this as a public utility. It's totally free for users. <clears throat> we're trying to give them the simplest possible way. For them to solve for things like data amnesia, what am I doing every day and I forget that I do these things, I kind of want to know who's following me and we'll make that easy for them instead of having to download a giant, <coughs> a giant file and sift through JSON files manually. And then beyond the free tool, we give them the opportunity to make a little bit of money, even if it's, let's say, $500 a year. $500 a year is enough to cover the cost of, say, your cell phone bill for the average college student. And it's not, it's not a huge amount of money right now, but data is growing exponentially for every user, and the privacy problem is getting bigger and bigger for every user, and this is a small step for users to take back control. Data has shown that the value of personal data can be up to about $2,000 a year. We think it's actually much more than that when you can start engaging targeted users with specific questions, interests, surveys, actions. And so for us, we've been working to prove that ourselves and our POCs. So, so you, I mean, I... I think uh, many of us would um, prefer Google and Facebook to be opened up, perhaps more than broken up, but you've got to imagine that it's, there's Facebook and Google don't really want to play ball with this. Um, so like, can, you, can you share like, like how you navigate or, or force them or what regulatory change is kind of yeah. um, coming down to actually that they will participate in a platform like this? We have a built-in escape hatch, <clears throat> so assuming that we're able to access the developer API for Facebook and Google, all we need is an OAuth token for the user. In the absence of, the OAuth, in a, in the absence of access to the developer API, any user can still access their data. We would simplify the process for the user to, inject, to, to basically pump their data directly into our pipelines. And if Facebook and Google were to deny users access to their own data, 
that's a big problem that they have, and we're happy to take advantage of that. So you think it's doable? I mean, or is it how is it is it live and working that you can you can suck in all the data? Yes. Um, in real time. Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah, and I'll say that we we do have some uh, strong supporters within Google and Facebook. But we also think that ultimately, when they realize what we're doing, we're extremely accretive to what they're actually trying to do. People spend more time on Google, more time on Facebook, create more data exhaust, create more monetization. We think of it as users are building inventory every day as they're using free consumer tools like Gmail and, and Facebook Newsfeed. And that inventory is just ported over to Ozone, and then <clears throat> we're operating essentially a market on behalf of the user. Mm -hmm. You guys mentioned ethically sourcing, and to the extent that you could share with us your thought process where dependence or demographic that is younger is, are, you know, come onto your platform or your service. Yeah. How do you think about, you know, what is the cutoff in terms of either age or, yeah, how do you think about, you know? Yeah, I mean, I, where, taking where back a step, um, a big part of our platform is, is community. So we're gonna come out with almost like a, like a regular daily wiki in small social media kind of bites to start educating less technical users on what we're doing. We're gonna follow all the same best practices as Google and Facebook as far as age cutoffs for everything, so we're not gonna reinvent that. But we do believe a big part of our platform is educating users of all ages on how they could better protect what will become the largest asset of all. Last question. What, what type of critical mass of users do you have to have to attract the first advertisers mm -hmm. to be paying you and making offers on the platform? So at the previous company that I ran, <clears throat> I, I ran a, a vendor to a large research company that would run remote surveys countrywide in countries like Brazil and Nigeria and Tanzania. Target sample they looked for was about five to 6,000 to be able to, what they claim was accurately extrapolate for the entire population of the country. And these are long, extensive surveys asking, personally identifying questions, like are you willing to invest uh, more in private education for your child? Are you confident in the state of healthcare uh, in your district, in your city? And we found that uh, five to 6,000 was more than enough for a, a billion dollar research company. All right, we are out of time, so let's have one more round of applause for Ozone. Thank you.